Hey guys, it's me, Callie. Today I'm really happy to be sharing with you the project that I came up with for this month's Gypsy and Witch theme. Our theme was the Harvest Festival of Maybon, celebrating the autumn equinox. It's a time of balance and equal light and dark, so I thought I would honor the sun and the moon with this really cool polymer clay plaque that I made with clay and cardboard and some upcycled elements too. So it's super simple. I know you're going to love it. Please stick around, share with me what you think about it, and I hope I inspire you to create one too. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is take some old cardboard. This is just some packaging I had. You're going to need two pieces about 12 inches uh, approximately. I mean, you can make this as big or as small as you'd like, but that's what we're working with. So you're going to take your cardboard, two pieces, and you're going to use some glue. It doesn't matter what. I like to use my Aileen's. You can use Elmer's, anything. And you're going to glue the two pieces together. So 12 inch piece on top of the 12 inch piece. Pretend this is 12 inches, okay? Set that aside to dry. And then when it's dry, we're going to take it and, you know how much I love using CDs, I'm going to take this CD and I'm going to use it as a template and we're going to trace around it or you can again do the size that you like. And then just on one side we're going to draw some rays of the sun. And just freehand it if you feel comfortable with it. If you don't, you could, I don't know, use another template or find a sun pattern or something, but just giving you an example, okay? So we're also going to be cutting out three stars. And I happen to have a star cookie cutter, um, which I could trace around, or uh, you could draw freehand stars, however you would like. All right, so we're going to draw three of those and we're going to cut everything out just like this. Okay, so those are our patterns for our clay and we're going to set those aside for a minute. And the next thing we're going to need to work with is our mirror. Now you can buy a small mirror at the Dollar Tree. I love to upcycle and recycle and so I save my old cosmetic compacts and deconstruct them. Now I've already done one, this bronzer here, which actually had, look at this beautiful sun uh, that was underneath the cover. I had no idea when I pulled it apart. So I'll be saving that to use in a further project. But I've already used one mirror and I've already kind of done this just to save time here. Sorry to flash you guys. But when you get these pans out, very carefully, and don't let children do this, okay? Do this with supervision in a well-ventilated area. Um, there could be other ways to do it, but what I chose to do was to take a hemostat or a plier and just kind of hold it onto the compact. And like I said, I've already taken this apart. But use something to hold it so you don't burn your fingers. And then I have a large lighter and just heat underneath the mirror over and over and over again until the glue loosens up and you can actually pry these mirrors out. Now, I used a little stick at one point. You want to be very careful and you can also use, um, you know, a cloth or a glove to get this out. Now, I did crack one. So, look, you can see where I burned this already. But once you get the mirror out, again, save all your goodies if you want. We have that and put that aside, okay? So the next thing that we're going to do is to take all of our cardboard pieces and coat them with some glue. Now, you could use, again, Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue. You could use Elmer's Glue. You can use Bacon Bond. Uh, this is by Sculpey. All right? And you're just going to, I'm going to use my finger, and I'll show you an example, and I'll come back when these are done. 
but literally just squirt it out. You can also use uh, acrylic paint. What you're trying to do is to provide a non-porous surface for the clay to adhere to uh, because we're actually going to be rolling this clay right over this cardboard shapes. So let me cover all of these with glue, make them nice and tacky, and I'll be back here when those are dry and we'll carry on. I just wanted to show you this again. I went ahead and grabbed my other Aileen's because uh, my first one was getting low. You're go I'm just putting it on and smearing it with my finger. And I never thought that you could use regular PVA glue. I thought you had to use, you know, the special Sculpey kind. But I did uh, Google it, and sure enough, it's safe to use. So, and make sure you get all the edges nice and good, every piece of this, and we're also going to do the back, okay? So, the sun and the moon and the stars, and let them dry, and then the next thing we're going to do that. is heat up our oven. So, I'm turning mine to 275 Fahrenheit, and we're going to condition our clay. I'm using Primo Clay by Sculpey in white. You can use whatever kind of oven baked polymer clay you have. Bake it according to package directions. Mine says 275 Fahrenheit or 130 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes per quarter inch thickness, okay? So I've preheated my oven and now we're gonna condition our clay. Basically, to condition your clay, you're just gonna play with it. And if it's stiff, you knead it and keep it warm and back and forth. If you don't have a pasta machine to roll it out with, you can use a roller, which will help you. I do have a pasta machine near me, and I've already conditioned my clay, and I've rolled it out uh, on the number four setting, and number one is the thinnest setting on my pasta machine. So number four is kind of almost in the middle, and this is what I'm coming up with. Now, if you'd like, we're going to use these and place our cardboard pieces on them as a pattern. I like to even up the edges. You don't have to if you don't want to. And you could also use gloves at this point if you're concerned about keeping your clay clean or avoiding fingerprints. I'm not worried about it because we're going to be painting and we're also going to be texturizing, but it's an option. And I just have a, a ruler here and an X-Acto knife. You can use any kind of a clay cutter or whatever. And I just like to straighten up the edges a little. I think it's easier to piece these together. So just kind of trim them out if you want. And I've already done a whole bunch. I have a stack here on a piece of glass. I do like to work on glass, but I'll just show you what we're going to do. We're going to need two of these large sun pieces. All right, we're going to do two clay pieces out of that, and we're going to need six star clay pieces. So to make the big piece, like I said, I'm just going to lay out and fit them together and kind of gently press, okay? Polymer clay is wonderful to work with. It's very forgiving. All right, we're going to kind of just make a mosaic of clay. And then when I'm done with that, piecing it all together, pinching it together, make sure it's big enough to fit your piece. All right, and then we're going to just lay it on top. Now, let's pretend this is all pieced together. All right, and then once you have it all covered with clay where nothing is sticking out, you know, fit all these pieces. I'm going to use my X-Acto knife, all right, to trim around the clay. I mean, trim around the pattern, okay? And we're going to do two of these. And we're going to do the same thing with the stars, okay? We're going to lay out our clay, make sure we have a big enough piece, and then literally just cut it out. It doesn't have to be exact. We're going to be molding these around the shape. I just want to show you. All right. So we're going to need six of the star pieces. And it's the same process for everything. And like I said, look at that. It's not exact at all, but we're going to be pressing our cardboard into the clay. 
and then doing another piece on top. So we're going to make a sandwich with the cardboard in the middle. And with the other piece on top, which let me just show you so you can see what I mean. Be very careful, obviously, if you're working with sharp knives or blades. And we're going to do this to every piece we have. And you can bake the cardboard right in the clay, no problem. <coughs> it gives it added strength. Okay, so here we have it. And it doesn't matter if your glue isn't all the way dry either. It's okay if it's still a little tacky. We're going to make a sandwich here. And I'm just going to work with the clay and mold it around the shape. Get out your air bubbles as you work it out. Okay, go all the way around. So we're going to make three stars and one big sun and moon shape using this technique. And when that's all done, I'll see you right back here. And then we're going to do some texture. A little while. You know, you have to go back and forth. And like I said, I don't care about all the marks in the pieces. We will be texturizing these, but everybody has a front and a back. And you can pick whichever side you want. Um, we're going to set these aside one second before we texturize everything. Let's take some more of the white clay and then go a little thicker. And I rolled out onto my thickest setting, which is number one for me. And we're going to trace around the CD. We need this piece too. And I wanted it thicker than the other ones. So this, I am going to try to be a little exact with it. With my X-Acto knife. Uh, because this is going to go straight on our piece with no cardboard or anything. I'll just take this off. put the CD away finally and you know this doesn't have to be perfect but again you could try to fit it together this is going to be our crescent moon so actually you know what right now I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a crescent moon Maybe we can just get rid of that spot right there and make sure you can see this um, I'm going to kind of just intuitively, if you will. Now, if you need to lay out a pattern, you could do that too. Um, I also have a moon mold, but I thought I would just freehand this for people who don't have that. But whatever you need to get your moon face on your piece, okay? So I'm going to just take this away. And then I'm going to kind of, you know, make him nice around the edges. So let's, uh, we can actually start by texturizing him first. And I'm going to use some of these texture stamps by Lisa Pavelka. I also have some other ones in here. Um, I think this one came from Walnut Creek. And it's kind of cratery looking. It's actually kind of flowery, but... I'm just going to press this directly into the clay all over and we'll go back later and put some features on him or her <laughs> la luna okay and then let's see I just want to make sure that I'm not sticking to my board and I see that I am. That's why I like to work on glass. So right now, I am going to take this piece and set it aside for one second. Put it right on the CD. And we'll go back to our other pieces here. Um, and I'm going to texturize those the same way. I'm going to use some of these different stamps here. You can use anything. You're just looking for texture for our mica powders and paint to kind of adhere to. And I'm not going to do this all on camera, but I'll show you again. 
uh, with a star that we're just going to go around. Oh, you can't even see. Here we go. Down in here. All over. Okay. Now, the only place I'm going to leave without texture, and I'll show you with the CD. Here is where our moon is going to go. So this part right here, I'm not going to texturize. But everything else, the rays around here and the suns. You don't have to do the back of them if you don't want to, but you can if you want. So let me texturize that all up, and then we'll put our moon piece back on here and give him some details. Texturized. I used the CD as a guide just to keep that clear. And I also did a little more on the moon. So you can do this one of two ways. You can pearl X first and then glue on the moon or do it after. I'm going to do it after. So, I mean, we're going to pearl X after. So I want to kind of get an idea of the placement. And we are going to be placing our mirror as well. So... And like I said, you could use, oh, you're going to get a glare here. Hmm. How are we going to do this? I want to, okay, do something to that effect. All right. And the way we're going to do this, and I said before, you could use the PVA glue. I happen to have some of this Sculpey Bacon Bond, so I'm going to be using that, and I'm just going to put some on the back of the mirror, and eyeball this, I won't push it in all the way yet, and same thing on the back of this moon, I'm going to lay some of this. Now, if you don't have this or any glue, the clay will adhere to clay. This just helps it. And I apologize for the lighting. It's getting dark out. We're having a storm. Okay, so that's what we're looking at, okay? Now, that being said, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to press the mirror pretty firmly, be careful, you don't want to break it, uh, down into this clay. Don't worry about the mirror getting dirty or smeared or anything. We'll clean it off. Kind of want to, you know, press around, adhere your moon, and then I want to add some features to the moon face. So you can use anything, a knitting needle, a anything to draw with, you know, and I'm going to work on his little nose, and this stuff is going to be very subtle until the, um, we're going to put black paint over this when we're done to kind of antique it. So if you need to, look at pictures of moons. All right, I'm just going to kind of give him an eyebrow here. And you can make, you know, put a little finesse on this when it's done too with some black paint, but just want to get the main features in with his eye and some wrinkles for her eye. Some facial lines. Okay. You can get as detailed or as simple as you want. Um, actually a little less detail sometimes is good, just a hint. So play around, play around with your nose shape. Um, you can use any kind of tool to just kind of sculpt around. Um, give him his lip definition just a little. All right. So when you're happy with however that is, and I really don't know how well you can see that, but there you go. All right. Or like I said, use a mold or something. Draw the face of your choice. If you want, you could do the sun's face and leave the moon as a shadow. However you want to do it, okay? So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Pearl X powder. Now these are mica powders. You can use old eyeshadows. 
you can use chalk, you know, um, grind up some chalk. You could use that. These are great because they have, you know, shimmer to them. So I've decided to use, I have a gold, bronze, this blue, and then kind of a white. So the blue and white is going to be the moon. The bronze is going to be all around the sun, including in here. And then this gold will be for our stars. And I'll show you quickly how I'm going to do one, and then I'll do the rest off camera. Use a little goes a long way with these, okay? I'm going to use a brush and take some of this powder. And I always put links to everything I use down in the description box of my video. So if you need to know where I got this stuff, I will let you know. And then take a star, any star, and just brush this, not, you know, and it immediately brings the whole piece to life. You could put on as much or as little as you want. You know, go, go with a little at first and build it up. You could mix colors, however you choose to do this, okay? This is your project. But, all right, look at how beautiful that is. So I'm going to do all of the pieces. We'll Pearl X them up and then come back together and continue on. Okay, I'm almost done here, but before I continue, I have this glove here so you don't keep getting the, getting the glare. Um, here's the moon, as I put the glare right in your face. I just did that blue and a little bit of the white, and we're gonna try sponging some alcohol ink on that too. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but bronze rays, and then before I make this bronze, what I've decided to do is I have one of these little punch-out cutters, and I want to cut out some stars. So let's do it right here, and hopefully these will come out easily, uh, which it did, which is great. All right, I want to do three of these. and. Could decorate however you want you guys all right that guy didn't come out so easy and this is the real world okay they get stuck like that just take a little pointy tool try to maintain the shape of the star uh, I'll make that better and then I'm gonna do one more fingers crossed let's try here. Pull up. Beautiful. Got it. Okay. And what I'm going to do with those is color them uh, white with the white Pearl X and then add them back in. So I'm just going to take some of this. Show you an example of one. All right, just like that. And when I'm done bronzing these, I'll put the stars back in. So I just wanted to show you that. And I will, I'll put them in with a little bacon bond. So I'll re-add them once I do this bronze. This is what we're looking like right now. And before we go any further and attach our stars, I'm going to flip it over. And I'll paint this later, so I'm not really worried about it. But I'm going to approximate where I want my hanger to be. So I'm guesstimating about here, and we have some options for hangers. I'm not going to put any weight on this, I don't want to disrupt any of our texture, but you don't have to be too delicate with it. I love to use pop-top tabs. Um, you can use a like an eye screw with maybe some picture hanging wire. You could make a bale out of wire and insert it. You have a lot of options, even an unbent paper clip. But like I said, I like to use these. And I am going to use my bacon bond again. But let's just make sure, check twice, uh, where I want to go. So about here. 
and I am just, I've bent this a little bit. You can see I've kind of just bent it without snapping it too much and I'm going to bury this fatter end in the clay like this. So I'm just going to kind of dig it and before I get it in there, I'm going to put a little bacon bond under there as well as on my metal piece. doesn't have to be pretty, you just want it to be secure. And you can see I'm just pushing that in. If you want to reinforce it with a little bit of more clay there, um, because you know it is a little heavy, but once these are baked, and you can use any kind of a tool to work with this, like I said I don't want to press too hard. So just kind of play around until you feel secure and like I said you could do the same thing with a wire or an eye screw just make sure it's not a straight piece of metal going into the clay because if it is it'll pull right out when you're done at least put a little fish hook or a bend on it alright so I'm happy with that and there's enough you know for me to get a uh, nail under there so I'll show you how that looks like I said, it's not too pretty on the back, and hopefully we didn't do too much damage on the front, which it doesn't look like we did. And now that I have the bacon bond out, I'm just going to put a little bit in each hole here. Now, these little stars can kind of lift up during baking, but I'm going to take a chance and put those in. And if your stars got distorted uh, when you pulled them out, like mine did, just cut new stars out of some white clay. That's all I did using that cutter. And then to put an indent in the center, because I want to add a bead later, and it also helps to push this down, I'm just using the end of a paintbrush. I'm going to push right in the center and twist it so I don't lift the star back out. Right in the center, twist it, and that did get kind of bent. Play around with it. As like I said, it's very forgiving. And there she is with her stars and her sun. And there's a beautiful balance in the world. Isn't that nice? I love how this comes together. Okay, before we put down our big stars, because we're also going to glue those, and these are going to go around the edges here, I do want to add some kind of decorative trimming, if you, you know, want to call it that. So I have a clay extruder here. This one is from Makin's, and this is just like a Play-Doh extruder. I have a disc inside that will make long ropes of spaghetti clay. You just open the bottom of this. I already have this loaded and ready to go. You put your clay in there. I'm using black. Made a tube of it choose the disc of your choice. There's all different shapes. I tend to use this snake one the most. And then you just turn it. Let's see if I can... I've already done some of these, but I want to show you because it's just so much fun. And... Okay, and these long snakes are just great for outlining things. Um, I like to let them hang down as I'm doing them see in the mirror there. All right, and then when you get to your, however, you know, I usually let it go until the clay runs out, but you could just cut these off, and then you have these cool little snakes to play with, okay? So I would like to add one of those cool little snakes around this mirror, and I'm going to use this bacon bond and just not too much. I'm going to lightly go around and then, like I said, I kind of already have one of these. And I'm going to pinch the end to kind of make it... And you could twist these, you could texturize these too. But at the end, I'm going to cover these with some gold rub and buff. So that's going to be... But, you know, do what you feel like doing. These videos are meant to inspire you, not to tell you, you know, hard and fast how to do something. So there's that, and then I thought I would do one around the whole perimeter of the moon. 
you know, our, the shape of the CD circle all the way around. And then when we get these down, we'll add our big stars and then it will be ready to go in the oven. Oh, you know what? I, oh, I don't want it down there. Whoops. Mistake. Well, that's okay. It's bacon bond. It will uh, just melt away. All right. Live and in 3D. Um, I did want to try some alcohol ink on that moon. What do you think? And if I don't like it, we can always um, paint over it, you know? So you can see that didn't really match up and I didn't really pick a good space for that to happen. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... If you don't like something, change it. I'm going to move this guy so we can't really see the seams where those meet up and I'll try to hide them with a star. Alright. Do that. Right there. And I'll just push that together. Again, by the time everything's embellished, painted, texturized, glazed, it just looks great. It all comes together. Okay, kind of like that. Loving that. So now with our stars, I'm only going to, and these are very lightweight, so I don't have much of an edge for these to rest on. And when we bake these, I will put, uh, you know, kind of a shim or use a piece of tin foil or cardboard to lift this up. But you can do however you want. I don't have a big elaborate setup. So I'm just going to put some of this on the bottom of the star, on these two sides, and picture where you want this to go, and that's where I want that to go, and for right now I'm just going to rest a pencil under it until I get my tray here, and I'm going to do the same thing all around the perimeter. Space those out. You could add as many stars, you know, as you'd like. Here comes a paintbrush. Um, you could put smaller ones. Whatever. Look on Pinterest. There are a million decorative moon and sun hangings, you know. Find inspiration for these everywhere. This is not my original idea. This is just my technique on trying to make one. So I hope you're inspired to make some too. All right, so we're just going to do that, and let's do some alcohol ink. Why not? All right? You've got to sometimes listen to that little voice. I'm going to use this Adirondack in stream. Um, let me quick grab a glove, and then we'll sponge it on the moon. I don't you know. I'm not going to do any kind of brown on the bronze or anything, but I have a little tiny makeup sponge. And I'm just gonna, I don't know if that's a good idea with that Perlex powder or not, but I wanted to kind of add a little more depth. And I felt like doing it, so I'm doing it. Let's keep the sclera or the white of his eye clear. Um, I did get some brown or bronze Perlex in there, but I'm not gonna fuss with it too much. And we are ready to bake. Now, I am going to put this, like I said, on a baking sheet, um, covering it with tin foil, and I'm going to prop up these star edges a little during the baking time. And I think um, we're going to let this go for about 45 minutes. Okay? So I will see you back here when this is all baked. And then we'll just antique it, and it's almost done. Very exciting. See you, in a, see you in about 45 minutes. Well, it's not 45 minutes later. It's about two minutes later. You guys, I totally forgot. I want to add swirls to these rays. So I just have my black snakes again, and I'm going to curl them up. I'm so glad. <laughs> Can you imagine if I baked it? Well, I guess you could add it afterward, but uh, let's do this one. I'm just going to coil it up. Alright, make a spiral. 
and kind of you could play with it where you want to put it if you even want to do this. This is just what I felt like doing. Um, I kind of just want this decorative little thing here and I will cut it to fit how I want and when I'm happy with it I'm just going to show you one and then I'll do the rest off camera. Um, I will put a little bacon bond on the back of our snake here or PVA glue whatever you got and there you go so you're happy with it play around and you know that's a little sticky there you go and you can you know again use any one of your tools or the back of a paintbrush to just push things down so I'm going to do every ray like that, not the stars, and then it's going in the oven, and then I'm going to see in 45 minutes. Okay, now it's 45 minutes later. I've taken it off my baking sheet, which is just a cookie sheet that I've covered in foil, and this is the cardboard that I had used to hold up those stars. It baked fine. And now I have it still on the piece of glass that we baked it on. And we are going to add some black paint and some blue paint. Now this is again a part where you can deviate from and do whatever you want. But right now I have some uh, Americana multi-surface satin in black tie. And I have it in an old palette dish here. And I've watered it down. I'm going to use a little spouncer brush and we're going to just, and don't be afraid, I also have a wet cloth. Um, I just use old rags instead of a baby wipe or something and I also have a paper towel, a damp paper towel. So whatever you choose, we're going to put this on and again, don't be afraid, we're going to put it everywhere if you want but this step to me really brings out all that beautiful texture because we're going to wipe it off when we're done even on the blue I'm going to try to stay away from that white of the eye as well as the um, don't worry about the stars I'm going to do a section at a time because I really don't want it to dry on there, but we'll do this one little section over here. And then I'll finish up off camera. So once that's like that, I'm going to come in with my rag and I'm just going to lift off exactly where I just put down paint. And look how that just brings out that detail. I'll pull it closer to you so you can really see. And when, it dr when it's dry, you can really see it. But see how that black just lays in all the texture? Um, the moon really does look like it has craters. So I'm going to finish doing the entire thing. And then I'm going to go over the moon itself with some of this True Blue Americana Multi-Surface Satin. Um, and I'll blot that off too, but I want it a little, little deeper than that light blue we're going with there, okay? So I'm going to do this, and then when it's all antiqued up, I'll come back, and we're going to glue on our beads and put some glaze on it. So I'll be right back. Doesn't that look great, you guys? I just love, love, love that extra punch. You can use any color if you wanted to use like a darker blue or browns, but black always does it and there you go so the next thing we're going to do I have a few little gold beads that I've taken out and remember we did our indentations in our stars so good old Aileen's to the rescue once again I'm going to put a little teeny dab in each indentation and then we're going to pop those beads right in there or the decoration of your choice Try not to have the bead holes facing up so you can see them. I try to put them on the side if you can. If you can't, 
don't worry about it. I'll never tell. Okay. Now, I made another one of these that I'll show you when I'm done here, where I did everything the same, except I also put some holes in this background here, and I didn't outline the back of the moon. So, you have a lot of options. That being said, let's move on to my favorite rub and buff and antique gold. I've kind of created my own Q-tip with a skewer and a cotton ball that you can use, a regular cotton bud or swab. And this stuff a little goes a long way, but I'm just going to take some. You can even do this on your finger if you want, but I'll just take it on the Q-tip. And we are going to, if you choose, I am choosing to embellish these little swirls as well as the, and again, you can kind of rub that out with your finger. Um, I'm going to highlight these black outlines that we've done. And I'm going to randomly, my favorite word, kind of just dash around the stars and things like that, lightly brush, um, and with no real rhyme or reason. All right, so I'm just gonna do that kind of everywhere. And when I'm done rubbing and buffing, we'll come back and put some glaze on, and then we're gonna be done. Okay, I'm all done with that, and I'm happy with it. Went back and forth for a little bit, but there you have it kind of outline the rays of the sun too and like I said a little of that stuff goes a long way okay guys the last step besides cleaning it up is to apply some of this Sculpey gloss glaze or any kind of glaze that is compatible with polymer clay make sure you check first because some of them actually do leave the clay sticky um, and I just have a brush and this paints on super easy. So we're going to paint everywhere except the mirror. Okay, and I'm going to give a good coat to everything. And I'm going to set that aside for one second. And I'm just going to show you the one that I've already done. It's already dry. It's exactly the same. Except for what I told you with the dots. So here it is. I mean, they're slightly different, let's see, side-by-side side comparison. Obviously, this one doesn't have glaze yet, but yeah, I was able to do a pretty close job, and I think you'll be able to, too. Um, I also went in with that black um, tie paint and a fine liner brush and just did some detail work around his eyes. Um, we had already d embedded that into the clay, and I just kind of highlighted them. So there's that. But yeah, this has one coat of glaze on it. And then the back, which I just, it looks like a mess. But I just did a quick coat of black. I'll do another coat. Um, for myself, I wouldn't care. If I were going to give this away, I'd want it to look nicer. But there's our tab, and I've already tried it out. It works. So I will get some close-up shots of this and also of this hanging, but I really hope that this inspires you guys. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Check out all the links below. Go check out my gypsy sister, Miss Rita Marie. Check out our Facebook group, uh, The Gypsy and the Witch. We'd love to see you over there. Each month we do a different project. So it's a lot of fun, and I love you guys. I hope you've been inspired. I'll talk to you really soon, okay? Take care. And I almost forgot, to clean your mirror, I used some of this acetone on a cotton swab and just everything came right off. If you don't have that, you could use nail polish remover. If you don't have that, use some elbow grease. <laughs> Peace and love, guys.